Uh, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to have a quick look uh, with you um, about the following use case. So uh, we're going to use a Power Automate desktop. And the idea behind is that we go to a specific website with foreign exchange rates. We get the information of a banknotes, buying rates for USD and GPY. We, uh, so GPY stands for Japanese Yen. We save the entries into Excel table for later use. And then we send an email to several recipients, uh, you know, that has fixed addresses, subject and body the message with exchange rates. Uh, this is a very simple case, simple scenario, but it will, um, you know, you'll get some ideas on what to do and how, how to start using uh, Power Automate desktop. So let's have a look. Um, the What I want to do, right, I want to go to this site and then I want to locate the USD buying rate, so this number, and the uh, GPY buying rate, so this number. And then I want to store both of these values in, in a local Excel sheet. Uh, let's see how, how I've done it so far. We created this flow, it's almost finished, except for the last stage to send an email. But let's see what we do. So the first step on this flow is to launch this new Chrome instance. After the instance is launched, I start um, the web recording. So in order for me to do the um, um, web record, I just click here on web recorder and I just do some steps, right? And um, here I extract the data and then I, I run this uh, second time this web record to extract the data for the second element and then I store it, you know, I launch Excel, I uh, write Excel to a worksheet and um, with some values and then I uh, record these uh, entries there. So let's see how it works for now and then we create one together. So now the website is open. Right. The values get extracted. You see now I, I have this Excel sheet and it has this uh, entries, right? So now let me go ahead and close this. And uh, let's try to recreate this flow, just so you get a very hands-on practical idea of uh, what happens. So I go to oh, the main screen, create a new flow. It's called uh, exchange rate. And now I take the action. So for the first action, first action I'm just going to copy from this from the original flow because it has the name of the website that I need to open so I go here copy then I navigate to the second screen uh, where is my second screen here this one and I click paste Oh, it didn't work. Right, let me try one more time. So I uh, can close this one. I copy this one, copy. And I go back and paste doesn't allow me to paste for some reason. Hmm. Oh, okay, now it worked. I just needed to click on this uh, canvas here in order to paste. So now we have this um, action which launches a new Chrome instance and goes to this site. So let me run it. 
So I have this site open. Then I do a web recording. I do record with Chrome. And now let's see, I go to this web page. Then I start the record. I want to export this area right here. Extract element value, right? So I extracted this text element. And then I also want to extract the value of uh, uh, Japanese yen. The issue though, if I select it and try to extract it currently, it will extract the whole table, which I do not really need, but let me show you what I mean. So if I do this, you see now I have the, the whole uh, table here. And it means that uh, if I click finish, I have everything extracted. And for me, I only needed only one um, page, so only one cell. Uh, so basically this one we can remove and... Uh, let me re-record these actions. So I go back, I delete, and now I do a web recorder again. This time I'm going to extract only one cell. So I work with Chrome browser, I specify Chrome here, then I start the record, then I click here, extract element value, and that's it for the first action. I stop, I finish. Now I have this value, uh, which is stored in this inner text variable, which I can rename easily. I can rename and call it uh, USD, right? Because it's a USD value. And now I can do it for the second time. <clears throat> so I, I'll use web recorder one more time for the second time to extract the other value. So it's again Chrome. Uh, then I refresh this page. And I go to this one right here. Oh, I need to start the record. So I start recording, go to this one, and I extract element value. Right, finish. That's it. Currently, I have two values extracted. Uh, let's see, this inner text variables. I need to rename them to, to proper names right so uh, let me save it first i have the flow saved successfully now what we can do okay so now we have one called usd and one is called inner text which i'm going to rename to uh, gpy to make it more meaningful and easier to read. So this variable will hold the value of USD as a text, and this one will call the value of Japanese yen as a text, right? When we have this, uh, when we have all these values, um, I'm going to save one more time. Uh, so now what we can do when we have these variables handy we can go ahead and create um, an Excel table. So I launch an Excel table. Excel. Launch Excel, right? Uh, we are going to use a, a blank document here. So 
this is a blank document and now I can write to this Excel if I look at it right to Excel worksheet we're going to write to this instance of the Excel document that we just opened right and the value to write first I'm going to write the name in the column A1 so in the beginning of this document on the specified cell we just write a text USD and then if I copy and paste then uh, for the second part we can write so let me edit this if I just double click on it it will allow me to edit I write um, the value of this variable so I write this one in column A2 right. and we do the same with B column for Japanese currency so this one we just update to B1 we will write a text GPY and one more value so here I write B2 and the value to write should be the value of this uh, Japanese yen variable right so now I click save and then I can run this flow let's see what happens now it's still being saved Okay, so it saves successfully, now we can run it. The page is opened, the values get copied. Now the new Excel instance should be launched and the value should be entered in the respective cells. Okay, so it looks like we have a small issue with this B1 column. You see for some reason the value is not here so let's have a quick look I'm going to close this one and so we have USDP1 ah okay so <coughs> GPY B1. Now it should work fine. Let me try to rerun it one more time just to make sure it works. When I run the flow again, it goes to the side, right? the values get copied, and the new Excel instance is created, and now the values are written properly, both of them. That looks good. So. Uh, if we go back to our use case, we, we go to the website, right? We, we get the buying rates for USD and GPY. We save the entries to Excel table. And now we can send an email to several recipients. One thing I want to mention about emails um, is that we might have to create a special gateway for that. But uh, let's have a quick look. Um, of course, you can extend it, right? If you work with multiple currencies, you can have multiple columns together. It's just uh, to, to make it a little bit more complex. But this one is a very simple just to show you 
how it would work. And uh, if I go here under actions and search for email, right? You see here I have three. I see three options: email, Exchange, and Outlook. Uh, I do not have Outlook configured for, for this test account on on my machine, so it's not going to work. Let's have a look here and, and send email. So here we specify from, we specify the sender display name, the address, and of course it can also be stored in, in variables. Then we have the subject, we have the body, and in the body we can provide, for example, values of this extracted data. Right, and um, today is, and uh, USD rate today is. Then body is HTML, we can also add an attachment if needed. And now we can configure SMTP server. Um, I do not have an, uh, an SMTP server configured. If you use Office 365, you can do it. The only thing is that you have to uh, configure um, a gateway. Uh, otherwise, it will not work because um, to establish the connection, it's a little bit more complex in terms of configuration. But uh, here would basically you would provide like smtp.office.com something like this. I do not remember the exact name. Then you put the port 587, enable SSL, then you authenticate here with the username and password and it should work. I tried it today, it did not work for me and the reason for that because uh, I do not have a gateway configured. Maybe in later videos I will show you how to do it, but for now you get an idea, right? So uh, this would be the next step to send an email. The main goal for today, you know, what, what to learn is how to use a web recorder so one more time to repeat here we specify the browser and uh, then you know i can just start the record and when i click on the browser uh, you see it, it singles out different uh, elements here so that's that's the idea right i hope it helped you if you have some questions you know put some something in comments and I'll get back to you. So have a wonderful day, stay healthy and bye bye.